Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the SITRA Podcast, your forward operation space for all things military and historical wargaming. I am your host, Riskini Jim, and today we're going to actually do a little bit of hobby for you and take a look at putting together the model kit for the AH-6 or MH-6 Little Bird. This helicopter has been in all kinds of service throughout the U.S. Armed Forces and a ton of other countries as well. Specifically, what we're building this one for is for an upcoming 20mm war game commemorating the 30th anniversary of the Battle of Mogadishu. So, like I said, the scale is uh, 1 to 72, which is roughly 20 millimeter. I know it's not exactly 20 millimeter, but it's good enough for our purposes. As you can see, the kit comes with several different variants, none of which are really exactly what we need. So we're going to have to do a little bit of kit bashing when we're done with this model build. But for today, all we're doing is actually building the kit that comes in the box. So speaking of the box, let's go ahead and open her up and see what's in here. It looks like a pretty basic kit. There's only kind of one and a half sprues in here. Again, the MH6 Little Bird is a very small aircraft, hence the name Little Bird. And again, it's 1 to 72. So the kit is not a huge deal. There's probably about 70, maybe 85 pieces in here. Now we're going to be using this as more of a gaming miniature as opposed to a model kit. Obviously it's a model kit uh, by a tallery out of the box. So there's a lot of detail in here that we're not really going to need as far as being used as a gaming piece, but we're still going to put it together as best we can, like we said, right here out of the box. Looks like we also got some decals. As you can see, it comes with uh, not only American, but Israeli and Japanese markings. Alrighty, so the first thing we're going to do is open up some of this plastic and take a closer look at what we find on the sprues. So if I can get this damn plastic open, come on, get out of there. Alright, so we have a smaller sprue with all of our clear parts for the canopy and so on. And yeah, like I said, it's not a terribly large or involved model kit. It's really only one and three quarter sprues but there are a lot of details crammed into these parts. So here we've got the starboard side of the fuselage where we see that classic killer egg shape that is prevalent on so many different variants of this aircraft. This aircraft is used everywhere, both widespread uh, military and civilian use. We have the side doors, we have pieces of the cockpit, looks like the floor and the, uh, where the seats are mounted. Here is the port side of the aircraft, the landing skids, the uh, tail assembly, the main rotor, and uh, several different options for equipment, armament, and ordnance that go on the side of the aircraft. Most of which, I won't lie, we won't be using on this kit because we're building this kit for a very, very specific use, Battle of Mogadishu, 3 October 1993. So yeah, I'm gonna have to make some calls and probably do some kit bashing when this kit is complete. Here are all of the canopy pieces. We have that front bubble, we have the side doors, and then two small panes of glass that go on the roof of the cockpit. All right, so what I'm probably gonna do with this is prime these and do a base coat on them while they're still on the sprue. Um, I'm probably gonna go for a very, very dark gray, very faintly tainted with green. It's not really black like we see in the movie. So I'm going to go ahead and paint and prime this kit while it's still on the sprue. I don't want to put it together and then have to mask all of these canopy pieces and then try to paint it then. Alrighty, the kit has now been primed on the sprue. I used a very, very dark green, kind of an olive drab, which isn't really dark enough. So if you've seen the movie Black Hawk Down, where this particular variant of the helicopter is probably most famous, it looks kind of jet black. I don't think that's entirely accurate. Most of the higher resolution photos that I can find show this in an extremely dark gray tinged with just the very faintest taste of the same green. So what we really want is something between what we see here and full on jet black. So I've mixed up my own paint and now that this is primed, I'm gonna break out my airbrush. I should say this is a Badger Renegade and try to get the correct color. 
So hopefully you guys can see on camera the difference and you know how this color is changing as I'm applying the airbrush paint. Also I'm shooting acrylics through this airbrush so it will dry darker than we see here on camera. Especially here on the fuselage. This is where that very specific color is going to matter the most. And again it will dry darker. You want to be very, very light with the paint, especially I find on aircraft models even more so than the armored vehicles that I normally build because a lot of the details, especially the fuselage rivets on these aircraft models, very, very fine details and you don't want to ruin that under too much paint. Airbrushing is now complete and as you can see, this is a lot closer to the color that we're looking for. Again, not quite black. We are stopping just short of Jet Airwolf Black. I realized that they were black in the movie. I think that was kind of the high contrast style that Ridley Scott shot the movie in. But again, most of the photos I can find were looking at this charcoal, very dark gray with just a taste of green. Now I did mix my own paint, so I can't really help anyone with, you know, color codes or anything like that. But I did save a good bit of this paint off to the side, keep it on my wet palette for the touch-ups. Because as I cut these parts out of the sprue, there's clearly going to be some flash and there's going to be some touch-ups that are required later on in the hobby kit construction process. Next, I have cut out all of the pieces that will be used in the first stage of the instructions. Yes, I'm one of those weird guys that actually follows the instructions. So here we have the deck of the cockpit. Next up, we have the bulkhead where the seats will be mounted. Here are the actual seats for the pilot and co-pilot. Again, this is a scale model, not a miniature kit, so there's a lot more detail than I'll actually be needing. Looks like this is the rear of the cockpit, although the piece actually goes in there more like that. Braces up against the uh, back of the seat bulkhead. Here's a small part that fits into the floor where the control sticks will be mounted. Here are the control sticks themselves. Clearly I have a little bit more flash to clean off of those pieces. Here's the instrument panel, which surprisingly didn't have any decal that comes with it. So I'm going to have to go ahead and paint some of the details on this uh, control panel. Just some yellow and whites. Again, this is supposed to be a gaming miniature and I'm not really going to go super into it. Look at these foot pedals. Look how small some of these details are. You'll never see this, especially on the table. So I'm going to go ahead and put this part of the kit together off camera. Because of the way the kit fits together, if I'm going to paint any of this cockpit, I've got to paint it now before the whole thing comes together. The cockpit assembly has now been put together, and at least to a certain extent, some details have been painted. So you can see where I was able to put a little bit of detail into the instrument panel, a little bit into the flight controls, and some very basic sort of a fake leather brown into the seats also the uh, back of the cockpit that battleship gray there again i don't normally get into the painting in these hobby build videos but anyone who's ever built an aircraft model before knows that all of this gets enclosed into the fuselage of the aircraft and you won't be able to paint it then the next big stage in the kit assembly involves the whole fuselage so yeah it's kind of important and I'm not going to lie, it's going to be pretty difficult, so wish me luck. We start off with the two sides of the fuselage, which have been cut out of the sprue. And what we're going to have to do here is to mount these clear pieces for the canopy into the fuselage first. Because the way the kit is designed, these pieces are meant to fit on the inside of the aircraft. So clearly you have to put them into the fuselage and then glue the two sides of the fuselage together. The one break I get on that are going to be with these doors on the port side of the aircraft. Because you're able to put the glass into the doors first and then put the doors onto the aircraft. In the middle of all that, you have to balance that frontal canopy piece. In the middle of all that, I have to handle and balance this cockpit assembly. And this is, again, going to be a lot tougher than it sounds. These two little bars that come out from behind the seats in the cockpit assembly, one of them has to go through this very small hole that I had to drill into the side of the fuselage because that hole is not there for all variants of the uh, Little Bird that this kit can support. 
So I gotta fit that bar through that hole while also making sure the cockpit assembly is properly seated. Also the other side of the fuselage and also that front part of the canopy. Definitely one of those times you wish you had four hands. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put at least some of this stuff together live on camera so that I'm not completely cheating. And we're gonna do the easy part here. Again, the clear canopy pieces that fit into the detached doors. So what I use, by the way, to put my glue on the model, I use a super glue gel, is I just use a disposable mechanical pencil so that I have the best possible control. I like to use very, very little glue on any clear parts of aircraft models because that way you minimize risk of any of that really annoying clouding uh, that the super glue sometimes put into your clear pieces. All right, so there is one of the windows put together in one of the doors. And of course the door fits into the fuselage of the aircraft like that. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of this stuff together off camera because yeah, this is probably gonna take a couple tries and a little bit of swearing. All right, I apologize now for the error in the lighting. Notice the lighting changed very, very harshly. But I was actually pretty stunned that I actually got this together on the first try. Uh, the hobby gods were smiling down on me for once. So yeah, you can see there where a lot of stuff had to go together all at once. So I put the glass into the starboard side of the aircraft first. No worries there. And then I had to put the other side of the aircraft together while balancing where that cockpit assembly goes. By the way, that has no guides or any kind of a seat for it. So yeah, I wasn't terribly happy about that. One thing I did sort of overestimate the difficulty for was that front canopy piece. I'm gonna be able to put that on there afterwards, after all. So there will be some touching up on the paint and primer because again, I did cut it out of a sprue. And like I said, one thing that I did overestimate the difficulty for is that bubble canopy can go on afterwards. So one less thing I had to balance all at once. I was sort of afraid that that bottom part of the cockpit was going to extend out too far. But as you can see, the bottom part of that bubble canopy bulges out quite a bit. And so it fits on there very easily. And again, that's where you get that very classic uh, killer egg shape that you see on all kinds of different versions of the AH-6 or MH-6, uh, the, both the military and the civilian versions. So we're pretty much done here and we'll be back when we're ready for the next step. All right, guys, look, I'm not saying that I would want to fly in this aircraft personally, but against all odds, I was able to put this fuselage assembly together more or less on the first try. One last note, I did have to drill another hole this time in this door before I was able to mount it to the port side of the aircraft. Because again, that sidebar has to come through there and there's no marking for that. So I had to put a little bit of white paint on there, sort of guesstimate where the door went and then use that marking to drill my hole. Uh, some things I might have designed a little differently on this kit, but for now, the fuselage is put together. On to the next stage of the kit assembly and here is where we attach the landing gear. Now, I don't want to get super critical here, but this is where I wish the kit had been designed just a little differently. Like, I wish that there were some slots here or some holes where pegs attached to the end of those landing gear struts could fit into the fuselage of the aircraft. As you can see, it's more of a flat on flat kind of a joint point, which certainly looks fine. It's a very smooth, you know, kind of a, of a fit. I just wish that it was a little more sturdy, especially since this is where clearly the aircraft is going to be resting. These little struts on these landing gear skids clearly support the rest of the aircraft. So again, it might be my fault for, you know, wanting to use this as a gaming miniature, which as you all know, is going to see a little bit more, you know, rough and ready use than a display model. It gets put together perfectly once and sit on a shelf. I'm going to be using this as a gaming miniature, so maybe I'm expecting something different out of the model, but for now, we'll see how it goes. Next up comes the rotor assembly, and anyone who's built a helicopter kit can tell you this is going to be half the aggravation that comes with your model kit. So break out your old man cheater glasses for this one. Here is the main hub assembly for the rotor. You can see, hopefully, these little square-shaped wells that are set around the hub of the rotor assembly. Okay, 
So the square shapes on the rotor roots, they each sort of fit right in there like that. And then you're going to have to repeat that process four more times, obviously once for each rotor blade. So suffice it to say, yeah, I've got my work cut out for me. And once that's all done, this additional sort of rotor star piece then has to attach to everything once you get the five rotor blades attached. And then you got to put this rotor cap on top of everything else. All three of those pieces have a sort of hole drilled through it for this axle for the rotor assembly. So not only do you have to put all three of those other pieces together, but you've got to make sure they're perfectly aligned so that that axle passes through and the whole thing goes together correctly. So yeah, got a little bit of work here. I'm probably just going to do the first uh, rotor blade here on camera because you guys don't want to watch me do the same thing five times. So I get a little bit of glue here on my improvised glue applicator. Drop the piece once because of course I do. And find one of those square wells in the rotor hub. Get a little bit of glue in there. And then we fit in the root of the rotor blade. You'll also see where these rotor blade roots feature different mechanical details on either side of the assembly. So you want to make sure that they go in there the same way all the way around the rotor hub for all five rotor blades. Okay, so a few minutes later, some cursing and some hurled hobby tools, and there we go, the rotor assembly is assembled. Not gonna lie, it wasn't very easy. And it's still not perfect, those blades aren't perfectly equilateral, and they're not exactly uh, set at the same vertical angle either. So I'll play around with this a little bit later, but for now, it's good to go. All right, moment of truth time. Let's go ahead and make sure we can mount this completed rotor assembly into the aircraft. So hold your breath, and oh, that was actually surprisingly easy. All right, there it is. And yep, the rotor still spins because of course it does. How else are you gonna make the cool helicopter noises when you're playing with this on the table? I won't play with it too much because the glue is still drying, but this is almost starting to look like a helicopter. Who would have thought? Coming up on the home stretch of this model kit assembly. So the first thing I did was I added these two remaining pieces of clear plastic that fit into the rear roof of the cockpit. I got a little bit of super glue on one of them. I'm going to see if I can clean that off later with a little bit of acetone. But for now, it's just one tiny little smudge. I'm not really worried about it. We had a much bigger disaster when it came to the whole tail assembly. Uh, the stabilizer, the tail rotor, the whole nine yards. The little piece that's supposed to go on the end of the tail boom there and branches off to provide attachment points for the stabilizer there, uh, the elevators, the tail rotor. Yeah, the, that whole back part of the aircraft there. When I'm cutting that off the sprue, it sprung off and flew into a parallel universe, never to be seen again. So that piece that you see there, if that looks a little rough, that's the corner of a sprue that I had to cut off and sort of craft into a replacement. That whole T-bar there, that's what's holding on the T-bar, the vertical stabilizer, the horizontal, I don't know if that's a stabilizer or an elevator on a fixed wing aircraft, and then those two tiny little, I'm going to call them spoiler fins, I know that's not the real name for them, those two more fins that you see there on the upper part of the tail assembly. That whole thing is being held together by a new replacement part that I had to cut out of the sprue. It's like uh, six or seven parts there all together. So yeah, there was a little bit of cursing there, but um, we did get through it. It seems to be holding for now. It's a little crooked, but I'm going to fix that later off camera. And yeah, we're back on track. So now that I have those little roof glass pieces put in there, I can put my rotor back on. And yeah, in spite of my ineptitude, <laughs> against all odds, this is starting to actually look like a little bird. So again, we're sort of coming into the home stretch here. I have removed the rotor assembly yet again because I have one more piece to attach to the top of the canopy and it's easier to just move it out of the way for a second. So I'm not sure if this is an antenna or an IFF transponder. 
Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and fix it where it goes, right here on top of the canopy. Alright, there she is. That's where she goes. And that's one more step of the model assembly completed. It's a good thing I made this rotor assembly detachable because I keep having to take it off. So hopefully I don't break it as I keep, you know, taking it on and off the aircraft. And for now, this little bird is actually complete. I realize there's some additional parts that go there on the sides. And I'm going to leave those alone for now because I actually have to do a little bit of research to see what I want. Now this kit comes with a bunch of different versions that you can use. There's a Japanese version in here, there's an Israeli version, there's a US Army version. None of them are actually what I need for Mogadishu. And to be fair, I don't really know what I want even for Mogadishu. There's two basic choices. There is the Mini Bird gunship uh, with the uh, rockets and uh, miniguns, which don't come with the kit. I'm going to have to scratch build some miniguns. And then there's also the uh, troop carrier one where you see the Delta Force operators on those two-man benches on either side of the aircraft. It does come with some options. Uh, the closest ones there are the rocket pods. Again, there are no miniguns uh, with the kit. I should note that there are no co uh, no pilots that come with the kit either. But I got to sit down, work on my scenario, and see where I'm actually going to be using the little birds in the game table context, and then build the equipment, ordnance, and armament options uh, to match that requirement of the scenario. So there's going to be a little bit of scratch building that we're going to do a little bit later in the process. Um, of course, that's going to have to get painted after it's assembled and affixed to the aircraft. So if it looks a little bit different on the table than it does here, that's why. Here is a closer view. Again, not a perfect build because I did have a problem with a few of the parts. Also, it's not complete because I got to figure out what I'm doing with these side door options. I was going to put in those Delta operator benches, but I don't have the figures for those. So it looks like I'm going to be building the MH6 gunship variant. But even there, I'm going to have to scratch build some miniguns. So that's where we're going to leave it for now, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Please remember to hit that notification bell. Also, please consider joining the SITREP Podcast Discord. There is an auto-accept invitation link to our Discord in the description of this video. Join our community, see what everybody's up to, and best of all, show us what's happening on your hobby table. But for now, this is Ariskany Jim with the SITREP Podcast. We are rounds complete for another episode, and as always... Tango Mike for watching.